Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Mono Blue Spirits. What is going on, everybody, and welcome back to another gameplay video. Today, we are jumping into Explorer for our flex day, which is basically like the anything goes of Arena, I guess, is a good way to describe it. I don't know. I don't play much Explorer. I'll just be honest. I've played a couple times, and uh, I really enjoy it. So I thought we'd explore... There it is, a little bit more today uh, with a nice little mono blue spirits deck created by White Raven, who I believe does have a YouTube channel. So I'll try and make sure I remember to link that person. Uh, haven't heard of them before. So I apologize if you're really big in the community and I've missed you, my bad. Um, but this deck looks really fun. Uh, it's essentially a flash spirits deck. So the idea being that we don't really play during our turn for the most part, there are a couple of small exceptions. Uh, but for the most part, we actually just get to play at instant speed. Aside from, I believe, two cards, uh, which is Ascendant Spirit, which obviously, uh, if we can get turn one, is like primo perfect, uh, and we can level up throughout the game, and of course Curious Obsession, which is hopefully going to be able to draw some more cards throughout the game. Uh, now we do have Spectral Sailor, which does have a draw ability just inherently on it. Uh, this is a card we're going to want to protect if we can get it around pretty early in the game and get to that four mana. It's an extra card. Even if we only draw one, it's replacing itself in the hand, uh, which is obviously a step in the right direction. Uh, we do have Slip Out the Back for just a little bit of protection. Uh, in the two drop slot, uh, we have a couple of interesting things. So Lofty Denial as well as Geist Snare uh, are basically our counter spells for the deck. Uh, aside from Essence Capture, which is of course countering a creature spell only, uh, this does put a 1-1 counter on a creature you control also, which is great. Uh, we do have Spectral Adversary, which of course can get bigger uh, the more lands we have. Uh, you can pay two as many times as you'd like as you play this and kind of build it up, build it up, build it up. Uh, and then ideally phase out some creatures in response to whatever kind of removal spell or sweeper or whatever the opponent might have. Uh, Rattle Chains is really nice because it does provide hexproof, uh, again, at instant speed. So uh, what we're able to do is essentially flash this out uh, in response to a removal spell and then protect whatever spell they are or creature excuse me they are trying to hit with that removal spell so works pretty well for that uh, we do have um, the ghast herald here this is a really good one because it allows us to get aggressive by tapping down the opponent's creatures so at the end of the turn after they play a creature or you know whatever uh, if we know we're going to be attacking the next turn if we flash out another spirit uh, we actually get to tap down that creature and then, of course, just have kind of a free attack. So it's really good for that. And then, of course, Brazen Borrower, providing a little bit of a tempo play, bouncing something on the opponent's side, and then, of course, being a nice little 3-1 body for three uh, at instant speed as well. So very, very nice. Uh, one thing I should note is that uh, with the Herald, we can actually play the Ascendant Spirit at instant speed as well. So that's kind of nice. And then 20 lands, uh, 20 snow-covered islands, and then just two face haven is the land package so generally a pretty straightforward deck but again white raven thank you so much for putting this one together i do think it's going to be a fun one uh and it's very reminiscent of course of the curiosity decks that we've seen in years past so really excited to try this one out hopefully we have some fun today hopefully we run with some amount of success again i'm still learning the explorer format so just keeping that in mind as we go through i'm not necessarily going to know what to expect every single time i don't know what decks are popular uh so this is going to be a learning experience for me but hopefully for all of us and hopefully it's just fun so let's jump right in guys let's see what we can do all right guys and here we are for game number one this is actually a pretty reasonable hand here again we can flash these out in the early turns of the game and then we actually have some protection plus the rattle chains so this is great uh this is exactly what you want uh we'll be able to run that spectral sailor out pretty quickly now uh thought seize is not great turn one but we do have a lot of redundancy uh, in this hand, so I'm actually kind of okay with it. I'm curious to see what they actually take. It'll kind of give us a hint as to what they might be up to. Uh, interesting. All right. Uh, well, pretty straightforward. We are basically just going to wait um, <laughs> and see what they do. Kind of interested to see if they do have a uh, removal spell here for the Sailor. Let's go ahead and flash it out. We'll try for it. Uh, chances are they've got something, of course, but uh, I do think we, we kind of have to commit somewhat here so let's do this and i think we just attack see what happens uh looks like they're just gonna be taking one which is fine by me 
Uh, and now we do have the Lofty Denial available. And keeping in mind, while this is a soft counter, we do have a creature with flying, which is pretty huge. Um, okay. I think we just counter it. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and take that opportunity now. I feel like that's probably a reasonable play. Uh, let's go ahead and attack in. And then again, we kind of just get to wait. Um, we do have the tempo play. So if they do play something scary, of course, we can just kind of hit them with that. Uh, and we'll see what happens here. Uh, do we rattle chains now? Or do we maybe just throw out a second spectral sailor? I think I'd prefer that. This definitely feels like the safer play. Uh, just based on what they could have. We do want to increase the clock a little bit here. Uh, ooh. Alright, so like we said, there is a couple of non-instant speed spells in our deck. And this happens to be one of them. So... This actually is quite nice because we get to leave up the rattle chains. So if they happen to try and remove this at instant speed, we do have an answer for it. Uh, interesting. Okay. Let's go ahead and do this. And let's go ahead and give this hexproof. Uh, and so now we just guarantee the hit and a draw. Uh, preferably a land. That would be great. Oh, awesome. Excellent. <laughs> so now even if they sweep, we still get to drop another Spectral Sailor and then draw a card off of it the next turn if we so choose. So... This sequence has worked out relatively well. Uh, Vivian's scary, for sure, but uh, I'm curious to see what they actually do here, because it could just be a reach token, in which case we can actually just kind of deal with that pretty easily. Um, okay. I think we do flash this out here, knowing that they really don't have much they can do. Land is great. Um, let's be semi-aggressive here. I'm going to go ahead and bounce this. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and take out Vivian, and we'll just go ahead and draw an extra card here. And again, we're in a position where we kind of get to do a little bit of everything. So this is quite nice. Let's go ahead and draw the extra card. And now we just have Brazen Borrower up. Hopefully they don't have a Sweeper this turn. That would certainly not be good for us. But uh, I'm kind of assuming they don't run a ton of Sweepers given the, uh, the cards we've seen so far. Now, again, I, I could very easily be wrong on that front. But uh, not sure. This does not have uh, Reach. I'm going to overcommit. Don't know that this is a good idea, but we're going to try it. Uh, all right. Go ahead and attack in with everything. <laughs> uh, very nice. And we do get to draw the extra card. So now at this point, oh, that's a beautiful, beautiful draw. So this is actually quite good. We actually just get to uh, leave up either a counter spell or the adversary if they try and remove too many of our threats. Uh, and yeah, we should be good. This is great. And there we go. Our first win with Mono Blue Spirits White Raven. Thank you so much. That was awesome. Let's jump into game two. The brand new Reanimator Proxy Pack is now available through the end of July. If you'd like to pick up this month's amazing Proxy Pack, please visit patreon.com slash it resolves for details. All right, guys, and here we are for game number two. Uh, kind of an interesting hand, but I think we'll at least try it. We don't really have a good turn one play, obviously. Uh, Curious Obsession is no good on its own. Uh, and so this will be a turn two, either Rattle Chains or Adversary, if I had to guess. Uh, nice. Okay, so self-mill. Um, very interesting. Alright, well, easy pass, obviously, and we just see what they're up to. Very curious. So this could very easily just be a reanimator-style deck, which is scary, I would imagine, for this matchup. Um, the question is, do we want to counter this? I actually think not. Um, I think we want to let this happen for now. Um... The reason being, we want to get a threat down and then be able, of course, to um, to suit it up with the Curious Obsession. Uh, and I think we'll just go this route. The ability to give Hexproof seems important later on, so I think we'll leave that available. Uh, let's go ahead and Curious Obsession here. Fantastic. And let's go ahead and do this. So at the very least, we are going to grab a card off of this, even if they do decide to kill it for whatever reason. Uh, and we actually do have the Hexproof in hand, so even if they try and kill it, we should be able to protect it here. Uh, and because it's early turns of the game, chances are they're not going to have the ability to do, you know, tons of stuff this turn. It's probably either going to be play creature or kill adversary, and this is perfect. Uh, yeah, let's do this. 
if they do have another removal spell, certainly they could use it here, but we're gonna make them two for one it. And it looks like they don't, so that's fantastic. Excellent, excellent. Uh, let's see what they're actually up to. They're not going to attack, interesting. Uh, we definitely want to get that Faceless Haven down, so I'll, I'll take that advantage right now. Um, let's go ahead and get the attack in. Very good. They could always use this ability if they would like, uh, but again, we actually have a response to that, which is kind of nice, so uh, we'll see. Uh, this is quite good. So it is a soft counter, but it's going to be a difficult one for them to actually play around, unless it's like just Fatal Push. Uh, let's go ahead and Spectral Adversary here. Uh, yeah, I like this. Auto pay. Let's do this. Excellent. And now we just have more threats on the field. <laughs> uh, oh, Grease Fang, huh? I haven't seen Grease Fang in a long time. Okay, sure. It's a great way to deal with it. Excellent, excellent. I hate that card, to be honest. It's very good. Uh, and they can crew it now. Uh, which does kill the rattle chains, I suppose. Nice. Yeah, I mean, I can't really do too much about that. We just have to kind of get lucky um, off of what we have. We'll see. We will see. Okay, yeah, that's really good. Um, let's see, at the beginning of combat energy sure. Okay, so they're gonna have Parhelion next turn. Um, can they kill us next turn then? Uh, the question is, do we attack with the Faceless Haven, I think, right? Um, I actually think we do, and we leave up the, the snare. Uh, this isn't super exciting. Obviously, they just block the Faceless Haven here, but uh, I do think this is probably correct. And then we actually get to use that flame next turn, or the snare, excuse me, next turn. Assuming this sticks on the battlefield, of course. Uh, yeah. Okay. We will see. Uh, I'm not super optimistic about this. The Grease Fang is very, very good. Um, it's a ridiculous, ridiculous card for sure. Uh, and we can't interact with it because it's not a, like, played ability. It's just a, a really good card. <laughs> uh, yeah. Like, we can't counter it, if that makes sense. Yep. Let's see, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we literally have to do this, otherwise we die. Uh, obviously that doesn't do anything, but we literally have to block. Uh, so we might as well go for the maximum amount of damage saved. Um, and then they, of course, attack for quite a bit. All right. I mean, that's pretty good. <laughs> uh, yeah. Ugh. Um, so I think we're just dead, right? Like, we really can't do anything here. Yeah. So unfortunately, they just have a free block and we can't really do too much. So I'm going to go ahead and concede here, guys. Really sucks, but it is what it is. I mean, that was a perfectly reasonable game and it was actually pretty close. So I'm happy with that. Let's move on to game three. All right, guys, here we are for game number three. Let's see if we can get another win. We're one and one right now, so not doing too bad. Uh, this isn't exactly an amazing hand by any means. Uh, however, it we, we are on the play, and so I kind of like having uh, a lot of two mana options available on the play. I think if we were on the draw, we'd rather have the turn one, obviously, but, uh, well, generally speaking, we'd rather have the turn one, but it is nice to at least have some turn two options here if we so choose, so. Uh, that's perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and throw the rattle chains out there, I think. Just to be able to get something down. Uh, it's not exactly amazing, but it is something that's going to start uh, pinging away at them. Kind of expecting them to take either the Brazen Borrower or the Herald. I think the Borrower makes the most sense, so yeah, that totally tracks. Let's go ahead and attack in. And we just pass. Uh, again, the nice thing about this deck, you just pass. You just wait and make the best decision you can at the time. Uh, and that's about it. 
Uh, curious to see if they have any plays. It looks like no. I'm going to go ahead and flash this out. Um, I'm, it may be running into a counter spell or a removal spell of some kind, but uh, I think we do kind of need to progress. Interesting. Okay. So let's do this. Let's do this. Uh, this is going to start pinging in for a little bit more damage and then, of course, drawing us an extra card. So I'm pretty happy with that. Excellent. Uh, so now if they do just go for the Bone Crusher, uh, we actually just get to counter it. Oh. Interesting. Very good. That was well played by the opponent. Uh, forcing the upkeep hit was pretty solid. Um, yeah. Okay. Sick. I can't be mad at that. That was really good. <laughs> uh, ideally, we get the rattle chains down. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. And then we'll see if they have a response. They do. Uh, okay. Sure. Good news is we're pretty low on lands uh, in the deck. However, we seem to be drawing quite a number of them. Uh, what's nice, though, is they're actually a little stuck on lands. So there might be a world where we can kind of sneak out a win. But uh, Narset's definitely going to help them out here. This does shut down our draw opportunity. Oh, my goodness. We were getting flooded. In a 22 land deck, this is not what you want at all. Um... I'm interested to see. They do have a memory deluge here, so they could just go for that, uh, which is a pretty great play. I expect they've got more removal in hand if they're willing to put Narset down to one. Uh, they have a Thought Seize, so they can get this out of the way, uh, and then they're actually freely able to go ahead and Bone Crusher Giant. So that was very well played by the opponents. Uh, exceptionally, exceptionally well done. So, um,. We don't really have any other plays here, so uh, we might as well just go ahead and do that. Whoops. I just did that twice. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, definitely clicked on the wrong thing, but that's okay. Uh, I don't think we could have done it all anyway, so no big deal. All right. Let's see what the opponent's looking to do. We're just going to pass. I bet you they have a removal spell, but we're going to force the removal spell. Um, cause if they don't have it, we kind of need to stick this on the, yeah. All right. Wow. We are so flooded. Look at this. We have nine, 10 lands in a 22 land deck. Uh, that's pretty bad. That's pretty poor. Uh, but it is what it is. You can't help it. And there's the nickel bolus. That's very good. We have to discard our last land. Uh, and chances are we can't dig ourselves out of this. I'm yep. We're going to concede. Moving on to game four. <laughs> All right, guys, here we are for game four. Let's hope we can do a little better this time. Uh, I do like this hand. This is quite good. Um, ideally, I think what we do is wait uh, and try for the Spectral Sailor, and then that allows us to play... Um, yeah, I think this is going to be better. We'll see. All right, let's go ahead and drop that Sailor. Uh, let's do this. This leaves up the snare, which is quite good. Uh, let's go ahead and attack. I don't love <clears throat> the smoldering egg play is scary because obviously they're going to have some burn and some other answers. And the eventual goal, of course, is just to flip this. So uh, we are in a bit of a scary position naturally, uh, but we'll do the best we can. Uh, it looks like they're still letting the damage through, which is kind of amazing. I would think they'd uh, have done something about the Sailor before we're able to draw a card off of it. But uh, So the question is, do we go for anything here? Uh, and I think the answer is no. Let's go ahead and drop this. Uh, let's attack in. So the reason I said no is because now we can Herald plus slip out the back on the Spectral Sailor if we would like. Uh, and I think I'd rather do that. Uh, let's actually, though, go ahead and counter this. That's going to allow them to draw cards, which I'm super not into. And there we go. We just got the win. <laughs> Uh, they must have been really screwed on lands, I have to imagine. So I'm glad that that worked out the way it did. Uh, guys, we have time for one more. We're going to go for five. Let's do it. All right, guys, here we are for our fifth game, probably going to be our last game. But uh, yeah, I mean, we can keep this. We've got a turn one spirit, uh, which we'll see if that actually sticks. Uh, it looks like we are up against burn, which is definitely going to be a rough matchup. But 
uh, we'll do the best we can here. So hopefully they can't, or they, maybe they can, but hopefully they don't remove uh, the Ascendant Spirit here. If they don't, we can keep it around, and then of course we have Slip Out the Back for a little protection, or the Snare. Uh, and either way, obviously, we're in much better shape if we can force some issue on their side. So we'll see what happens. They're going to get one damage off with the Epicure, and then of course they could have a one mana spell, or they could just leave up the blood. Uh, but no, looks like they're going for that. Awesome. Okay, uh, with that in mind, the question becomes, what do we want to do? And I think we honestly just pass. Whoa, no, 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 no. I think we just pass. Uh, leaving up Snare or Slip Out the Back plus Sailor. Uh, could be any or multiple of these spells, so we'll figure that out as we go. They do have the 2-2. Two -two. We also just have the Brazen Borrower play if we'd like it. Uh, interesting. Do we counter that? Um, actually, no. I think we let them do it, and then we get to Brazen Borrow it. Right? Yeah, I think that's probably for the best. So let's go ahead and do this. Get to return that to the hand, um, which is pretty good. I mean, saves us quite a bit of damage, only taking two this turn. Now again, this does open us up to the kill on the Ascendant Spirit. If they happen to have a one mana burn spell, they could go for it. But my guess is they go for these, the, uh, the, this, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, interesting, okay. So I think we need to play the triple blue here uh, because we will potentially want to use the Brazen Borrower. Um, now the question becomes, what do we want to do? And again, I think we just get to pass. Uh, let's not attack. Let's just pass here. Um, this is scary because obviously they could have quite a bit of, st of stuff. Uh, they don't need a lot of mana to do what they're trying to do, just as we don't, to be fair, but um, this is definitely a bit scarier. Uh, I think we let that hit because we want to leave up uh, the, the plus on this. Okay. Man, they've got so many of these guys. Uh, interesting. Okay. Interested to see how this goes. Um, so we definitely just get to do this. and this uh so that was kind of a free kill and then we also just get to drop that spectral sailor so now we're getting somewhere it's not necessarily amazing but we are getting somewhere uh and now we actually get to leave these up as well so again i think we are in pass mode i don't think i don't think we can slightly I, I don't think we can start attacking quite yet uh i think we need to stabilize before we can really make things happen so Kind of interesting to see what they do here because if they just tap out for like a creature of some kind or this. <laughs> um, do we snare it or do we just slip out the back? I think we just slip out the back. Um, I think that's probably the best bet. Yeah, that's fine. Um, let's go ahead and drop the Brazen Borrower. We do just kind of need to keep pressuring the board every chance we get, so that's perfectly fine. That's interesting. Um, okay. So with all of this in mind, now we can start attacking. Um, and now we do just pass. They are going to flip these, but we actually have the Faceless Haven, or we can just flash out the Herald. We've got plenty of good options here. Um, so I'm not actually that worried about it. Let's see what they do. Do we want to tap something down is the question. I think we actually can. Let's go ahead and do it now. Uh, so what we're doing is just kind of forcing the issue with them needing to tap stuff down. We still get to leave up the snare uh, and we can obviously block one of these two. Um, if they happen to, whoops. If they happen to, I think we do this. I think we just kind of force the issue as best we can. Uh, if we're one for wanting most of their threats and protecting our life total, we know they have burn. Uh, and so we know that they could very easily deal with all, all of our life total very, very quickly. We can't really allow them to get us below uh, where we're at here. I think we have to keep pressuring as best we can. Um, excellent. Okay. And they did not have a follow-up play. 
Uh, worth noting, we can just draw some cards at some point as well. So definitely something to keep in mind. Um, we're going to attack with these two. I'm still playing it a bit safe, uh, but they're pretty run down on resources here. Now they might, uh, if they draw a mountain, they're probably in much better shape, but so far they have not gotten very much. Uh, I'm actually just gonna counter that. <laughs> uh, it's not a very exciting play by any means, but I think it's perfectly fine. Um, and now we can start leveling up this spirit even more and maybe even get a little more aggressive with our plays here. So uh, we could also just draw a card, of course. Um, I'm trying to think which is the better play. I think I'd rather do this uh, because worth noting that eventually we just get to draw cards off of this anyway. Uh, that's really good. So let's go ahead and do this. That's going to allow us to still rattle chains if we would like um, at some point. And I'm actually going to go all in here. I don't think this is the best play, but uh, it gets them down to one. So it's really pushing the envelope for them. And now Lofty Denial should basically lock this up because essentially they're not going to be able to pay for it. Uh, and in which case we actually just kind of get them here. So um, I think we actually just pass and take the two. I don't think we... Um, try and block with the rattle chains. I don't see a reason to. Um, perfect. Let's go ahead and lofty denial that. And maybe they have another one, but they're not going to kill us this turn. Uh, and so that's that's kind of where we're at. And there we go. We got the win. That is two and two for the fi uh, two and two. No, I don't remember. It was a decent record. Let's talk about this deck. All right, so first and foremost, White Raven did put this deck together, and thank you so much for doing so. This was an absolute blast of a deck. I really enjoy this playstyle, the like instant speed, tempo-y kind of playstyle where you're drawing extra cards and just kind of answering, answering everything on the opponent's side of the field as best you can. Uh, and fortunately, we did okay with that. Now, again, we have a lot of learning to do in the Explorer format. This isn't the format I'm used to. I don't know all of the pieces and expectations of the format. And so this whole expression or this whole uh, series, this flex day, whatever you want to call it, uh, is a prime example of just learning the format, hopefully having some fun with it and enjoying some really cool and creative deck building. Uh, and I'm really glad we were able to do that today. So White Raven, thank you very much. To everybody watching, I really do appreciate it, guys. Thank you very much for watching. This has been an absolute blast. Stay tuned. Tomorrow we'll have some more standard gameplay. And if you guys do have a deck that you would like me to try, regardless of format, although definitely focused in standard for the most part, uh, feel free to share it with me. I'd love to see what you guys have come up with. It would mean a lot to me if you would share it with me. Thank you guys again very much for watching. Leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you're not already, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.